Hi everyone, my name is Khan. I'm a PhD student at IBM Research Zurich, and today I'm going to talk about our new paper called A Non-PCP Approach to Succinct Quantum State Zero Knowledge. This is joint work with Jonathan Botto, Vadim Lubashevsky, and Gregor Seiler. So in particular, this approach is related to lattice-based zero knowledge proofs, which can be summarized as the problem of proving knowledge of a short vector S, such that AS is equal to U is AS is equal to U mod Q. So there have been many recent works which, um, which prove this or similar relation. And the main advantages are of this approach is as follows. First of all, they rely on the quantum safe assumptions such as CIS or LWE. And also they can be Im implemented efficiently. So addition can be implemented um, straightforwardly, but then we have multiplication, which can be implemented using entities, for example. So the main drawback is that the proof size is linear in the number of committed messages. So it is still fine for some applications such as group signatures or verifiable encryption, but maybe for some other big scenarios, this is uh, the proof size basically blows. Therefore, one can use a more kind of a generic approach, which, which is the PCP approach such as Aurora or Ligero. So one could just uh, transform this equation AS equals U into the underlying uh, problem for these uh, proof systems such as R1CS. And then one could just apply the generic proof system. And then one can basically apply one of those protocols. So it is quantum safe because, because they rely on the collision resistant hash functions. Uh, but um, the proof size becomes sublinear. Asymptotically, this is better than the using lattice uh, commitments technique. However, it is pretty slow compared to the lattices. And in some cases, the speed can be much more important than the proof size, right? So for example, when we want to implement protocols on constrained devices, such as credit cards, then we need, uh, we want to have efficient implementations. The motivation for this paper is, of, of, for this talk, is basically to have, um, to construct purely lattice-based zero-knowledge proofs, which get the advantages of, the, of these two worlds, kind of. So we want to have something which is sublinear, but also is fast. So our contributions can be split into two protocols, which are called the level commitments and the lattice-based will of proofs. Okay, so the, let's, let's just focus on the first one. Okay, so let's start with the level one, which is the previous work. So there's a paper at Crypto18 by Baum et al., which provide a lattice space zero knowledge proof of a commitment opening with, uh, which is with the sublinear proof size. So the commitment is the standard sys commitment and the proof size is uh, asymptotically square root of n, where n is the number of secret integers. So later on, they show how to use that for proving circuit satisfiability. Okay, so let's uh, sketch out the protocol, which is relatively simple. So the statement is AS is equal to T mod Q. So A, S, and T are matrices, and S already contains the randomness, okay? Okay, so S contains the randomness. Um, this, the commitment is hiding and binding uh, based on the sys hardness. Okay, so the protocol is as follows. So there's a prover Mario. Uh, it has the secret um, matrix S, which is short, and the commitment T. So verify only has T. So the prover at the beginning samples some Y that's used for the rejection sampling and then sends W, which is AY. So it sends W. Later on, the verifier gets the challenge matrix C. It will be binary in our case. It, will, it sends the challenge C. Then the prover sets Z to be equal to Y plus S C. It applies rejection sampling and it sends Z. Then the verifier checks two things. Firstly, if, it's, if Z is small and then if AZ is equal to W plus TC. So correctness follows immediately because AZ, 
well, uh, y, z is equal to y plus sc, so az is equal to ay plus asc, which is equal to w plus tc. Now, the proof size is the size of t and the size of c and the size of z. So, um, so now, now we have to define what the dimensions are, unfortunately. So suppose that S is a matrix of dimensions N times M, A is K times N, and uh, capital N will be defined by N times M. So it's the number of integers inside the matrix S. By defining new variables, we set T, Y, and C, and Z. Uh, so T is the matrix of dimensions K times N, y is of dimensions n times v, c is of dimensions m times v, and z is of dimensions n times v. So the proof size can be simply bounded by km times log q, so this is the size of t, plus mv, which is the size of c, but um, later on we're just going to neglect the sizes of the challenges because they are small, and then we have the size of z, which is nv times log of 12 uh, sigma, which is comes from the rejection sampling. So basically we want to, the idea is to pick parameters such that the sizes of the first two terms, uh, the, the, well, the size of that is all similar to the size of the last term. So then if, if we choose parameters in such a way and in a way so that the cis is hard and so on, then the process can be bounded by the poly of lambda, where lambda is the para security parameter, times big O of n plus m. But then n plus m will be kind of uh, almost equal. Then this this implies that it's the proof size becomes poly of lambda times uh, almost square root of n asymptotically. Um, yeah, so this is kind of the idea of, of that paper, which is called the level one. So now in the level two, we will actually show how to get the cube root of n proof size. Okay, so level two. So suppose we have a secret matrix S of dimensions m1, m2 times m3. So now the S has n integers in it, which is um, equal to m1 times m2 and m times m3. So the elements in S are small, they belong to Zp, and P is small. Okay, so first of all, let us write S. Let us write it as uh, M1 matrices. So we, we, we will split S into S1, S2, up to SM1, where each Si has dimensions M2 times M3. So for Q, which is less or equal, well, for Q2, which is much smaller than Q1, the, co the commitment becomes T is equal to, so, okay, so this might be a little bit scary, but uh, let's go through it slowly. T is equal to A1 times kind of a long matrix, well, the kind of a complicated expression for the matrix. So identity M1, tensor A2 times S mod Q2, and the whole thing mod Q1. So in other words, we can write it as A1 times the matrix, which contains the matrices A2, S1, mod Q2, A2, S2, mod Q2, up to A2, SM1, mod Q2, and the whole thing mod Q1. Okay, so why do we need to moduli? Um, the answer is that they will be useful for the binding property. Okay, so we have this... Um, definition of the of this level commitment for the level two so we say that the relaxed opening of t so what we actually gonna extract in the soundness proof um, the relaxed opening of t is a pair of small matrices s and r such that t is equal to a1 times so we have this matrix in it inside so identity m1 tensor a2 times s mod q2 plus Q2R, so this is this additional term, and the whole thing mod Q1. So now let's see why um, we have this binding property. So, so suppose an adversary finds two different pairs, S R and S prime R prime, 
then we have the equality here, right? So first of all, we can see that, um, so we have A1 times something, some matrix, and it's going to be small. I mean, the matrix inside is small because R is small and Q2 is much smaller than Q1. So that's why the matrix, which is, in, which is multiplied by A1, is small. So therefore, by the cis-hardness of A1 modulo Q1, we must have that these inner matrices are the same. So in particular, identity M1 tensor A2 times S mod Q2 plus Q2R is equal to identity M1 tensor A2 times S prime mod Q2 plus Q2R prime. So from that, we simply have that R is equal to R prime and identity M1 tensor A2 S is equal to identity M1 tensor A2 S prime mod Q2. Similarly, we can argue that by the cis-hardness of A2 mod Q2, we get that S is equal to S prime. So from that, we get the binding property. So the level two basically um, is now. So the, the prover has S, which is small, and the statement is T is equal to A1 times that matrix identity tensor A2 S mod Q2 and the whole thing mod Q1. So let us write this inner, this matrix in the big brackets as S prime. Then the statement just becomes the level one uh, protocol because S, S prime with the S prime being, let's say, secret. So obviously S prime is not short, so uh, we don't have to do the rejection sampling. But okay, so let's see how the first part of the protocol looks like. Okay, so the this we can for now we can ignore the first part because this will be used for rejection sampling at the end. But yeah, so uh, the prover generates some y small y, and then it um, writes w which is equal to a two y, and it sends w. Then the verifier um, sends the challenge C1. And then the prover sends V, which is equal to S prime C C1. So then the verifier checks that A1 V, which is equal to A1 S prime C1, which is, is equal to T C1. So this protocol is very similar to the level one protocol, right? Without rejection sampling. So what we have left to do is that we have to prove well-formedness of S prime. So this means that having sent the V, which is S prime C1, we need to prove that V is equal to identity M1 tensor A2 times S C1 mod Q2. Okay, so V is equal to, as, as I said before, V is equal to identity tensor A2 times S mod Q2 times C1. So we can alternatively write it as V is equal to the matrix A2S1 mod Q2, A2S2 mod Q2 up to A2SM1 mod Q2 times C1. So if we write V as, if we split V into M1 matrices, like sub matrices, then we get that VI is equal to A2SI mod Q2 times C1. C1. So now if we take the kind of a block transpose of V. So we just take the transpose of the submatrices VI, then the matrix V1, V2 up to VM1 is equal to A2 times the matrix S1, C1, S2, C1 up to SM1, C1, mod Q2. So actually, this becomes kind of a statement for the level one, right? So on the left hand side, we have a matrix which is public, is equal to A2, which is public, times a matrix which is small. This uh, method of uh, writing V into M1 matrices and then taking the block transpose, we will call it folding. So, so now we can just continue with our with the level one protocol, right? So the verifier will send C2. Then we do the rejection sampling. So we write Z is equal to Y plus S1C1, S2C1 up to SM1C1 
times C2, then do the rejection sampling, then we send Z, and then the verifier checks that Z is small, and A2Z is equal to W, plus this block transpose of V, which is V1 up to VM1, times C2. So now the proof size becomes the size of T, plus the size of V, plus the size of Z. So if one uh, figures out all the dimensions, then each of them corresponds to different MI. So if we find parameters such as the sizes of T, V, and Z are similar, then the proof becomes basically poly of a lambda times uh, big O of n to the one third. So in the paper, we generalize this approach to many levels. So if we have D levels, then the proof size becomes asymptotically essentially n to the one over D plus one. Also, it is worth mentioning that D has to be a constant because otherwise, if D is not a constant, for example, if D is log n, then um, the extractor for soundness becomes inefficient indeed. So um, asymptotically, the runtime of the extractor is something around like lambda to the D. Unless D is a constant, uh, the runtime of the extractor is not a polynomial time. Okay, so now let's switch to the lattice-based bullet proof. So we don't really have much time, but it's okay to, to give a high-level idea for that. So it, it is inspired by the original bullet proofs uh, protocol. And the main observation is as follows. So again, we have some uh, statement like A, S is equal to T, but now we split A and S into two parts. So we have A0, A1, and then the vector S0 and S1. So they, are, they have equal length. So um, then for any scalar C, we have that C A0 plus A1 times S0 plus C S1 is equal to some cross terms W0 plus CT plus C squared W1. So W0 is A1 as 0 and W1 is A0 as 1. So if we send W0 and W1 to the verifier, then we end up proving a kind of a similar equation. So it is of the form B S prime is equal to T prime and B is C A0 plus A1, S prime is S0 plus C S1 and t prime is w0 plus ct plus c squared w1. But now s prime is two times shorter than the original secret vector s. So this means that we reduce the, uh, the length of the secret vector. Okay, so how does the protocol look like? So for simplicity, let us work over the polynomial ring. So a, is, uh, a has only one row. Um, and well, one row and m columns. Uh, m is, let's say, very long. And we it's over rq. So rq is uh, zq of x modulo x to the n plus 1. So the statement is as is equal to t, where t is a polynomial. So we have the prover, let's say, Luigi this time. So he has uh, the secret vector s. Obviously, it's short. And uh, t. So the first step would be, send the, would be to send the cross terms. Just like before, we send the W0 and W1. So a, W0 is A1 S, S0, W1 is A0 S1. Then the verifier selects some scalar C. And then the prover sends S0 plus C S1. So it, it will send the Z. And then the verifier will check that C A0 plus A1 times z is w0 plus ct plus c squared w1. However, this would require to send, to actually send the z, and z has the length m over 2, basically. So this would be quite expensive. So apart, so instead of doing that, we could just continue with another round and prove that c a0 plus a1z is equal to w0 plus ct plus c squared w1. So we can do that until it's not expensive to, re to send the mass opening set, basically. By calculating the, the sizes and choosing um, appropriate parameters, we get that the proof size is polylogarithmic in n. So 
n, this capital N is now small n times n. In conclusion, we have two protocols with two different approaches which have their advantages and disadvantages. So let's just go through them. So the level commitments have the sublinear proof size and it's zero knowledge. But, okay, so the, the second disadvantage is uh, we have already explained that. So the proof size is not polylogarithmic because D has to be a constant. Moreover, there is this massive slack for large D. So what do we mean by slack? So we say that, that when the slack is big, uh, it means that when we, when we do the knowledge extraction, then the extractor finds the secret uh, short vector or matrix S prime, which is much, much larger than the original uh, witness S. So when we say larger, we mean the, let's say, infinity norm or the L2 norm and, and so on. Basically, both approaches have massive slack. And this is because when we do one round, then the slack is uh, maybe okay in practice. But then if we do it in multiple rounds, then the slack grows exponentially. That's why the extracted witness becomes very large. Usually zero knowledge proofs is a one part of some higher level protocol. And if the slack is big, then all the other components of this of the protocol have to accommodate for that. Okay, but for the lattice based bullet proofs, we get the polylogarithmic uh, proof size. So there is no zero knowledge, just like the original bullet proofs, and there is this massive slack. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for listening and for watching. Uh, here is the link for the full version of the paper. Thanks. Bye.